Drum roll, please. And the winner is Gianni Infantino. <gasps> you, you really did get me. I mean, the guy, someone that's been working at UEFA since 2000, dealing with legal obligations and other professional matters. You're trying to tell me he's going to be the new FIFA president? I, I just couldn't see it coming. And clearly he couldn't as well. Take a look at the video. Oof. Dear friends, chers amis, cari amici, queridos amigos, etc., etc., I cannot express my feelings in this moment. I told you I went through a journey, an exceptional journey, a journey which made me meet many fantastic people many people who love football who live football who breathe football every day and many people who deserve that fifa is highly respected and we will restore the image of fifa and the respect of fifa and everyone in the world will applaud us and will applaud all of you for what we'll do in fifa in the future we have to be proud of FIFA and everyone has to be proud of FIFA and we have to be proud of what we will do together. But nonetheless, before I get into my tirade on the new uh, elected president of FIFA, um, the big winner today was definitely the reforms that are proposed. So, first of all, there's going to be a creation of 36 member FIFA council with six women included. Um, there's going to be a creation of a general secretary to handle business affairs. Now, this one is important. Term limits for president is a now max three terms, 12 years. So if we have a douchebag like Sepp Blatter taking control, we don't need to put up with him for 18 years now, just 12. And there's going to be an oversight by Independent Audit and Compliance Committee. And then finally, there's going to be a number of FIFA committee reduced from 26 to 9. So the level of corruption, I would say, is going to be reduced from an expanded field to a more concise, tight-knit group. So I don't want to put the guy on the chopping block straight away, right? Everyone deserves a fair crack at the whip. Nonetheless, it's FIFA. They deserved it. I'm a fan of football. I have every right to question this decision. I have every right to be pessimistic. And I have every right to expect that just because he speaks six different languages, that he will then know the word corruption in six different languages. Because that's how FIFA's been run, right? And there's one point that I want to make straight away, right? In his speech, he talked about transparency. It's a small word, but it's one that has become very cloudy in FIFA. Um, there's been many different questions posed to them. Why don't you kind of open the gates and showcase how FIFA's run to the broader public, to the people who pay for your salaries? Why don't you showcase the election, televise it, televise all of the, uh, the different meetings that go involved in making sure that this election is fair and just? Because in doing so, therefore, you portray the image that you want to go forward with. You don't keep everything behind closed doors. Because I know firsthand, I have friends that have attended and ask questions to those involved in the presidential elections. And they're very closed. Oh, no, no, it's, you can televise it. It's, uh, it would cause problems. Why? Why would it cause problems? Because this corrupt company has only done practice behind closed doors. It's never been in front of the people. And that's why I continue to say that the fans drive this game. The fans sell the tickets. The fans are the reason why all of those are involved and all those have the ability to go and abuse that power. So... Um, I don't mean to be skeptical, as I said. I want to be positive. I want to be saying, okay, we've got a new realm. But I can't overlook the fact that this man in charge, Gianni Infantino, was basically like a right-hand man to Platini, the disgraced Platini. For many years, he worked in UEFA. Just because he speaks six different languages, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed because it's another one who's been integral in this cog, which is UEFA and FIFA. And we know that there hasn't been transparency in those companies. There hasn't been transparency in their interaction and their transactions and the corruption that's been involved. So I am going to be skeptical and so should many football fans because this is another member who has been, maybe he's not been directly involved. I'm not saying everyone involved in the company is a bad egg. But when they are within the house that has been so, I would say, disgusting in their actions, you can't help but sense that they, he may have got a whiff of what they were cooking. He may have just had a scent of what was going on in there and maybe let it go by. Or maybe, we don't know. I'm not going to hold them. I'm not going to accuse anyone 
of anything they haven't done, but I, am, I have every right, as everyone does in the world of football, to be skeptical of an integral hire. Now, that's not saying any of the other nominees were any better. This is why FIFA became a problem. This is why the likes of Luis Figo and David Ginola and those players that love and support the game didn't, I would say, put themselves as forward as they could because they knew they were fighting a losing battle because FIFA is an ancestral company. That's what the only way to describe it is it's going to be in-house hires. If this man goes on to change things through actions, I will be the first to say, you know what? I was a little bit too pessimistic. Things are looking up. FIFA is going in a better place. But at the moment, as everyone should be, you're just going to be like, eh, okay. I'm not shocked that it was an internal hire. I'm not shocked that it was someone who's been involved in the company for a while. I just want to see actions. I'm sure everyone themselves will be waiting to see actions. So we want to know what you guys think. Was this a shock to you? What are, you, are you optimistic for the world of football or are you like me and just need to take a shot of whiskey every time you think about the name FIFA? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hit us up on Twitter at Francis underscore Maxwell at UIT Sports and come back and subscribe.